Greetings. This is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Sukkot Tabernacles 5781. We are in the Gregorian year 2020. Scripture reference is out of Leviticus 23, verses 33 through 36. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, On the 15th of this seventh month is the Feast of Booths for seven days to the Lord. On the first day is a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work of any kind. For seven days you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation and present an offering by fire to the Lord. It is an assembly. You shall do no laborious work. So this is the last of God's appointed feasts or festival. This is the seventh. Uh, this holiday is known by many days, many names. It is called the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tents, or the Feast of the Harvest, because it is after the harvest in the fall. Or simply put, it's also called the Feast or the Festival. And that's one thing I'm sure many of you folks have noticed. Uh, these Jewish God-appointed holidays, appointments, etc. Man, they have a lot of names and it can get really confusing because they use them interchangeably and everybody knows what they're talking about. So, you know, for us who are not familiar, it can be a little bit confusing to keep all that stuff straight and figured out. So... This festival is a week-long festival from Tishri 15 to 21. Again, Tishri is the seventh Hebrew month. Uh, when working in the fields during harvest, people lived in tents. The tents served as a reminder of the 40 years of wandering in the desert after the exodus from Egypt. The holiday is a reminder of of the provision and safety God showed Israel during their travels in the desert, as noted in Deuteronomy 8. The feast is a thanksgiving for the harvest of grapes, and that's in Exodus 23, verse 16. It is to be a joyous festival, that's in Deuteronomy 16, verse 14. Sabbatical rest without work is a part of the holiday, and I got the majority of that from New Manners and Customs of Bible Times. Uh, is where I pulled that information. So if you're interested, check that out. It's a fun little book. It helps bring it. I'll tell you what it does. It helps bring a lot of this stuff to light as to how they lived and saw the world in, in, in ancient biblical times. And, you know, here we are 21st century. Hey, if we don't have an answer, just Google it. I mean, so it's night and day it's East versus West. It's an agrarian society agriculture at the focus of it versus technology, science, secular humanism. I mean, they just couldn't be more diverse. So at any rate, in October 2020, the feast is scheduled to start on October 2nd at sundown and run through October 9th sundown on our Gregorian calendar. In God's timing, God's calendar, the festival is scheduled to start on Tishri 15 through the 21st. And again, remember, Tishri 1st is declared when the new moon is sighted. That's that's what sets the calendar in motion every month. So, you know, technically from a Hebraic standpoint, we they don't know when when each month starts. It starts when the new moon is identified. And, and again, that's... For those of you not familiar, that's about two witnesses. So it's it's more about a matter of being truthful, honest. It, it, it's a reflection of character. It's not a math or a scientific calculation is the idea. Um, and, that's, and that's where the conflict comes in the next statement. Remember, man's calendars and God's day planner, they may not be on the same page. And, and frankly, in fact, they're not. You know, God has one calendar. His calendar technically starts in the spring in the son or Abib, you know, what we would call March in a Western Gregorian calendar, not January. I mean, so the, the differences are stark, you know, in a Western sense, 
our day starts at midnight. God's day starts at sunset. Um, completely different. And humanity's way of marking time, God's way of marking time, not the same. And there, I got plenty of stuff posted on that throughout the blog, but I don't want to spend time on that. I mean, the focus of this is on tabernacles. And at the core of tabernacles, it's God's desire to live with humanity. And we mostly think about when God comes to earth to dwell with us. And 2,000 years ago, Jesus lived with humanity. Check out the gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, has indwelled in believers since the beginning of the church in Acts 2. You know, again, God with us. Christ has promised to return to the earth and reign for a thousand years. Revelation 20 is when he descends and starts his millennial reign. And eventually, God the Father will tabernacle with his creation on earth in Revelation 21 with the Son. So, and that's what's kind of bizarre. You know, you start looking at Revelation and that gap from Revelation 20 to Revelation 21 is a thousand years. Now, you know, as we read it, it's a couple of sentences or a paragraph or so or a few paragraphs, but that's, that's when all that happens. And, you know, the ultimate expression of that is God will live with his creation, with his people. So if you are interested, please feel free to share with others at paulthepoke.com. If you would like, click on the blue bar. You can receive notification via email. Enter your email address. We'll send you out something every time uh, we publish or make a post. The emails are not sold. I have nothing to do with that. It's all through WordPress. They don't sell the information. And sometimes there's a gray bar down here where you can type in your email address. Sometimes there's not. Today there isn't. Um, I still don't understand that, but... And if you're interested in specific topics or categories within the blog, uh, we have things from American Soldier, Angels, and this list. Oh, reasonably exhaustive. Been collecting things for over 10 plus years now. Um, all kinds of things to check out. I didn't post on this one on YouTube, but Charles Ninner, world famous cyclical economic studies uh had a conversation with our our economic guy at paulthepoke.com michael deville and by the way i you guys are getting some top-notch wall street quality research i mean this guy charles ninner dr charles ninner is known throughout the world for some of his market calls and this stuff is here for free wall street pays to listen to this guy uh, i'm fortunate enough to know somebody who has access to him and is willing to share the information doesn't cost us a thing i can tell you if you listen to this man you as he he's dutch and, and as he says the idea is not to lose money and he's very good at that and he's very cautious very conservative but there is a time to invest and take advantage of these types of things um highly recommend y'all listen to dr charles ninner he has some interesting thoughts about the coronavirus i don't know if y'all know this but this guy was a medical doctor i mean he's kind of a jack of all trades here's his his website charles ninner.com and he's worked for literally the best and the brightest on wall street and now they come to him to listen to what he has to say and he's a trained medical physician so earned his medical degree in 1984 <laughs> graduated from my Maimonides college in Amsterdam. That's a famous Jewish rabbi. I mean, this is a, he's a Renaissance man. He knows a lot of stuff. Uh, interesting fellow, well worth your time if you're interested. So appreciate y'all following along. Hope y'all find this interesting again. If so, please feel free to share the other with others at Paul, the Pope. Y'all have a great evening. Take care. Bye.